Today, I want to share with you one of my more complex fashion shoots, including custom set design, beautiful styling, five different lights, many different modifiers, gels, haze machine, and much more. Lindsay Adler here, and two things I love are creativity and sharing, specifically teaching and sharing with other photographers. And so one of my favorite things I love to do every single year is put on intensive workshops. So in these workshops, I basically create for other photographers what I love to shoot for myself. And sometimes they're very simple and elegant, and other times they're far more complex. And so I actually wanna show you the behind the scenes and photo deconstructions of one of my photographic workshop images. And the specific one is from a floral workshop. Now during these workshops, I team up with incredible creatives, amazing hairstylists, models, uh, set designers, wardrobe stylists. And so this set is made by the floral designer, Ivy Joy. So believe it or not, in the image you see here, this is not outdoors. This was completely built indoors at a location called the Foundry in Long Island City. And so what I did is I proposed to Ivy this vision I had, said I want something that looks like a forest at night, light from behind and streaks, so it's mysterious and, and dreamy and, and alluring, and then I left the rest up to her. And so this is the set that she created for me, and then I needed to direct the rest of my team. So I decided I wanted to play with the color red, so I instructed the wardrobe stylist to provide some sort of beautiful red styling, whether it be a dress or a headpiece, and what he came up with was this incredible look with a beautiful cape and beading. So that provides me the kind of the two essential pieces, the set design and the styling. And from there, I need to bring the entire scene to life through my lighting. So let's take a look at how I transformed the scene and gave the, the drama and cinematic look that is in the resulting image. All right, so as I mentioned, this is one of my most complex setups, and you can clearly see that here. There are five different strobes, and each one has a job. Each one is accomplishing something different. Typically, when I'm lighting a scene, I start by lighting the scene. What can I do to bring depth? I think what a lot of people do is they throw one light at a scene, maybe another for fill, but then, then there isn't really separation, there isn't drama. I like to light a scene so there's maybe a light overhead so that it looks like a top-down light which you often see in cinema or really outdoors in reality. I like to light from the back, so there's a little bit of, of mystery, a little bit of rim light, fill light to control the shadows. So I light the scene, and then once I place my subject in the scene, I'll light my subject. So let me share with you how I built this particular scene. Now the first light I started with is on the far left. That is an extra large white umbrella with diffusion. Now this light isn't doing that much in the final image, but fundamentally it's just an overall light to the scene to make sure everything's getting a little bit of kiss of light. I don't want anything to fall into deep shadow. Now later on, if I wanna darken something down, I can, but I wanna make sure everything has a little bit of detail. And again, the top down light gives a more cinematic look. So that's the first light. The next light on the scene that I decided to add were the two rim lights in the background. So let me show you these two rim lights. You can see them both with a red gel. Now originally what I had done is I had used strip soft boxes. Strip soft boxes are also commonly used as rim lights, but I was running into the problem of the light not really having as much control as I wanted, and I didn't have grids for them. So that's why I switched to barn doors. Barn doors allow me to control the spread of light. Now, my vision for the final shot is I wanted the lights to be pointed back at camera to create a little bit of a haze, but I wanted them to only really be focused in just the corners of the frame. And so strip soft boxes didn't work for that, but closed barn doors did. And the red gels that you see on there, again, that brought in the theme of the shoot for the wardrobe and the environment. So the two looked like they were working together. I didn't think that another color would unite the wardrobe quite as well. So those are our first three lights, an overhead main light and then two back rim lights. And then next up is because the lights are from the back and from the top, there wasn't much fill from the front. Most of the scene looked pretty dark. So I decided to add a fill light. In this case, the fill light is a zoom reflector with a blue gel. And so my thought process here is that warm colors come forward. They grab your attention, which in this case is the red outfit of the model and those really eerie, mysterious, beautiful red rim lights. The blue colors, or the cool colors in this case, are going to recede. They're a little bit more quiet. So I can still have detail everywhere in the foreground, but they don't, it doesn't really grab your eye quite as much. Imagine if the light in the foreground were red. 
uh, the foreground would get a lot more attention. So blue plays it down just a little bit. But there's a couple other important elements in the scene. So, so far I've lit the scene, but now let's talk about lighting the subject. This is where my fifth light comes in. My fifth light is a five degree grid. What that is, it's a hard light source that's very concentrated. And all this light was doing in the scene is just lighting the subject's face. That's it. So when you look at her skin, it's so porcelain and it really, it kind of shines and it, your eye is really directed to that. That's from the five degree grid. If I didn't have a light on her face, she would kind of get lost in the scene a little bit. So that tells your eye as the viewer exactly where to look. So that is all there is for lighting. But the other absolutely essential part of this scene is the haze machine that I have down here on the bottom right. So what the haze machine is doing is it's filling the room with these little particles. And when the light backlights the particles, it helps create those beams, those streaks of light. So in the final photograph, particularly on the left-hand side of the scene, you see these beams of light entering the frame. Without the haze, you wouldn't have that same effect. So the haze is one of my favorite things to add to create a little bit of mood, a little bit of atmosphere. Now let's talk about our camera settings. I was using a Canon 5D Mark IV and a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. And I used a 24 to 105 because this is a scene. I wanted a wider focal length. I wanted to be able to shoot and include the entire scene. Um, I could have used a 24 to 70, but in this case, I went with 24 to 105. All right, so now that you see how much went into the lighting and the styling and the wardrobe and the hair and makeup and the gels and all of that, let me show you what it looked like in camera. I actually think in camera, this shot looks a heck of a lot like that final result. Um, the light, the color of the light, the direction of light, everything looks quite similar. But there are a few things I wanted to improve. First and foremost, one of the problems that I see is that when you introduce haze into a scene, it decreases the contrast. The scene becomes a little flat. And so if you look, there's really not enough contrast in the foreground. So what I did in camera raw is I not only increased contrast, but I also applied a lens correction. I thought that the scene looked a tiny bit warped. So those are the two changes you see here, as well as popping the contrast on the face. I brightened up the face again to direct your eye there because there's so much going on. And then the last thing that I did is as I look at this, I tried to figure out where my eye is, is meant to be. Well, I look at her face, but I'm also drawn to the right-hand side of the frame. So what I wanted to do is darken down the right-hand side of the frame and emphasize these beautiful beams of light on the left. So that's when I went into Photoshop and I emphasized the beams and darkened down the right-hand side of the frame. The only other thing you might see is I added a teeny bit more blue to the shadows just to enhance what was already there from the gels. One of the things that I wish existed for me as I grew in my photography was understanding what a photographer was thinking and how they were putting together more complex lighting setups. There are a million tutorials out there that take you through the essentials of natural light or using a single softbox, but seldom did I get to you know, peek behind the curtain of a more complex setup. So for many of you, you may not have five lights in a custom set design, but as you look at this entire scene, as you look at this image, you might begin to see how you could do something similar in your own scenes, or maybe with one or two or three lights. And then as you grow and progress as a photographer, it will change the way you think and the way that you approach things. So hopefully I'm helping you in your growth and your journey as a photographer. There is a lot of gear used in this setup. So if you wanna see the exact tools that I use, check out the links in the description and visit adorama.com. And of course, if you wanna see more of my photo deconstructions and take a peek behind the creative curtain and see my techniques and thought process, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.